Hi, this is Doug with BNH, and welcome to the first part of our three-part series on producing professional 4K video from start to finish. If you're wondering why do I even need to shoot in 4K, check out our video on just that. For the most part, 4K video is just like any other video format, but in recent years the widespread adoption of 4K cameras, TVs, and production workflows has meant that working professionals have more things to consider than just the resolution. In this video, we're going to talk about capturing your 4K footage, so we'll focus on cameras, lenses, and media. All images start with a camera, so let's take a look at what you need to consider for acquiring your 4K video. First, you must take a look at the creative needs of the production you'll be shooting, your post-production schedule, and of course, the budget. You should also keep in mind your existing gear, as it might make sense to go with one camera system over another based on what you already have. We're going to look at camera choice, the lenses you'll need to capture a true 4K image, and how your choice impacts the accessories and media you'll need to get shooting. For cameras, 4K is just a starting point. Maybe you need higher frame rates. Maybe you need higher bit depths for an intense HDR color grade. Maybe you just need a camera that can deliver a beautiful image with minimal post-production. On the other hand, maybe you need a full fat raw image, or perhaps you need a smaller camera that can set up and break down very easily. So where do we begin? Our first setup is based around the Canon C300 Mark II. With a fantastic Super 35mm sensor, it delivers some of the best 4K images in its class. But perhaps the most important reason for choosing the C300 Mark II is its functionality, compatibility with Canon glass, and professional internal recording options. Its numerous C-Log formats give it flexibility in post, all while recording to a very strong 10-bit codec. We'll talk more about grading in parts two and three, but it's crucial to understand your approach to post-production when choosing a camera, because sometimes you may not be able to spend the time on a complex grade. For documentary work, television, and commercials, a camera like this means you have a lot less to consider in regards to rigging and post, while still creating a beautiful cinematic image. You might want the C300 Mark II if you're looking for 4K, 10-bit 422 internal recording, raw output over SDI, 15 stops of dynamic range, and of course, native compatibility with Canon lenses. As you can see, we've rigged out the camera with a cinema lens, follow focus, matte box, and rails. Our second option is the Sony FS5. There are a few advantages here in the form of a smaller size, lower cost, and the flexibility of upgrading the camera in the future. It has a gorgeous Super 35 sensor as well, based on the E-mount, which means you have a lot of lens options if you start adapting glass on top of the native options available from Sony. With 14 stops of latitude in the S-Log modes, the FS5 is a powerful option, but its internally recorded 4K is limited to 8-bit 420 color. In 1080p modes, the FS5 supports 10-bit 422, so this is also a very capable camera for HD delivery, but this brings me to what is perhaps the FS5's greatest strength. Thanks to a monitor arm, we've paired the FS5 with the Atomos Shogun Inferno Recorder. Sony offers a RAW upgrade for the FS5, which yes, allows us to either record 12-bit RAW video straight to the Shogun, or capture to 10-bit ProRes for easier editing and higher quality video than the camera records internally. Now, while this does add to the cost and bulk of the camera, these are optional components that make it a more versatile option for productions of various needs and budgets. If you're sticking with the internal recording, the FS5 also uses much more accessible SDXC media. Our third option we've set up is based around the Panasonic GH5. This camera packs a lot into a very small body, especially for its price point. You get internal 10-bit 422 4K recording, an optional V-Log upgrade, in-body stabilization, and a variable frame rate mode up to 180fps in 1080p. For portable 4K production, it's difficult to find a better option, but like most DSLRs and mirrorless still cameras, it lacks the ergonomics and feature set of a true video or cinema camera body. Now what that means is that while you can actually shoot up to 4K at 60fps internally with the GH5, you must rig the camera quite a bit, as even XLR connections require either an adapter from Panasonic or a separate recording solution. As a mirrorless still camera, it's compatible with a wide range of lenses through adapters, but because this is a micro four thirds sensor, we've employed a Metabone speed booster to give the GH5 a similar field of view to a Super 35 camera. With a cage, 
rails, follow focus, matte box, and the same cinema lens we've used on the previous cameras, you can turn this into a bigger rig than you might have imagined. Now, of course, you don't have to do all of this, but the possibilities are endless. The GH5 records to convenient SDXC media, and with such a small size, you can strip down the camera to the bare minimum and still produce great looking footage. Now, what about lenses? 4K images reveal everything. In recent years, it has become more important than ever to find the right glass for your camera. Now, because we're talking about cinema setups, we're using a Canon 50mm T1.3 cinema lens. What makes this lens special is its optical and mechanical design intended for cinema production. You don't need a cinema lens to create 4K video, but I strongly recommend it if you're pursuing narrative work, as cinema glass is color matched, breathes a lot less, and features built-in focus gears on the barrel to attach a follow focus. This lens is natively compatible with the C300 Mark II, but we can easily adapt it with a Metabone Smart Adapter onto the FS5 or a Metabone Speed Booster to the GH5. Now, while lens adaptation is pretty cool, run and gun shooters, those who need autofocus, documentarians, and event shooters might want to stick with native lenses. Narrative work tends to be very controlled, and the glass is almost always manual. But in time-sensitive situations, native lenses offer better autofocus support, accurate lens metadata, and quicker setup. The C300 in particular has an enormous range of lenses to choose from, which makes it an attractive choice, especially if you're already invested in Canon glass. Plus, lenses like the Cine Servo line offer a best-of-both-worlds approach to auto and manual control. For the FS5, Sony also offers native E-mount lenses, while many third-party lenses are directly available in the E-mount. Because it still uses a Super 35 sensor, you don't need to worry about cropping your field of view as it compares to most cinema cameras that also employ the Super 35 standard. For the GH5, however, the Micro Four Thirds sensor means we're dealing with a reduced field of view compared to Super 35. Now, in practice, this isn't as huge a loss as you might think, and the small size of the native Micro Four Thirds lenses make the GH5 an incredibly portable option. Regardless of your camera choice, I highly recommend investing in at least some native glass, as there will be situations where adapting lenses or using high-end cinema lenses is impractical. Last but not least is media. There are plenty of options for media that largely come down to capacity, speed, and format. But for the most part, you use what your camera requires. You need to keep in mind your production schedule when making this decision. At the high end, the C300 Mark II's CFast 2.0 cards are powerful, allowing for the high bitrate internal 4K recording that the camera is known for. But CFast cards do tend to cost more. What many people also don't take into account is storage media on set and during post. If you choose a camera that shoots in a less compressed format, or especially raw video, you need to have more storage for offloading, backing up, and editing your footage. Workflow is probably the most important consideration that new shooters tend to forget, and it's what makes the choice even more complicated. For example, the FS5 and GH5 both record to SDXC Media, but if you choose to record to ProRes or RAW via the Shogun Inferno, you're talking about completely different media needs. That recorder uses solid state drives and records to higher bit rates, but if you do have the space, these files might actually save you time and money in the edit. We'll talk more about that though in part two. So that concludes part one of our 4K production series. As we said in the beginning, 4K is just a starting point. With every production comes a different set of challenges, and with the multitude of cameras and accessories on the market today, it's almost difficult to choose the wrong camera. If you understand how to grow your kit with the type of work you're doing, you can make these cameras work for you. Consider the scope of your video, your budget, and your production schedule, and you'll find the decision much easier to make. Catch us soon for part two, where we'll discuss editing 4K material, ingesting footage, and learning just what kind of machine it really takes to chew through all that footage. For BH, my name is Doug. Thanks for watching.